Today, we're testing 25 macOS games on the new Apple M2 Max chip. Pause the video now for the specs of my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Whoops, wrong game. Our first game to look at is the survival horror game Resident Evil Village. This was ported to Mac by Capcom in a collaboration with the Apple Metal Engineering team. While it's missing ray tracing, it supports a lot of new macOS technology. With support for the ARM64 architecture, RE Engine, Metal Effects Upscaling to improve performance at high resolutions, and support for HDR, this game provides the best example of the GPU gaming power of M2 Max. At 1440p near Mac settings, with mesh quality set to high, we're receiving about 50 to 100 FPS. If I was you, I'd enable VSync for a more consistent experience, but that is just my personal preference. In this state, with VSync enabled, we're using up to 8GB of memory at peak, and up to 100% of the GPU and 462% of the CPU. It saturates almost 5 cores. You can even experience 120 FPS at 1440p here. This is thanks to Metal FX. I put it to performance mode and I'm now playing at about 110 to 120 FPS. It's a real treat, especially when using the sniper. Just make sure to enable VSync for the best performance at this high refresh rate. 4K is also very achievable at near max graphics, thanks to the help of Metal FX Quality Mode. It's very important to put the FPS cap to 60 and turn on VSync. This will allow for the smoothest experience at such a high resolution. In this state, we're using 9.12 gigabytes of memory at peak and up to 100% of the GPU and 309.3% of the CPU, three cores. Spaceship is an open source AAA demo that showcases current generation gaming technology. Unity collaborated with the Apple Metal Engineering team to optimize it for Apple Silicon based Macs. It supports Metal 2.2, upscaling solutions such as AMD FSR and contrast adaptive sharpening. And it showcases the Unity High Definition Render Pipeline, HDRP, and VFX Graph. I downloaded the build from GitHub and have built the scene in the Unity editor. At 4K high, we're seeing 58 FPS on average. This is largely thanks to AMD FSR being enabled when the screen percentage is set to 70%. It uses up to 5.1 gigabyte of memory and uses up to 98% of the GPU and 101% of the CPU, only one core. Now look, if a game uses only one core, it's typically a sign that it is being one core limited. It's generally not super good to see. But if a game is efficient, it shouldn't cause any troubles. Plus, the Unity architecture is very well optimized on Apple Silicon now. If you're interested in trying out my build of the game, I've uploaded it to GitHub. The link is in the description. Gameloft recently brought Mac gamers Disney Dreamlight Valley, the new life sim adventure. While it might not be for everyone due to its super stylized cartoon Disney graphics, I'd say it's still a good showcase of the GPU power of M2 Max. This game is incredibly well optimized, running natively too. Strangely, on 4K screens, it has a max resolution of 3200 by 1800 and an internal capped frame rate of 60 FPS, despite offering higher refresh rate options. So here I'm playing at a graphics preset of PC Ultra with VSync off, and it's a locked 60 FPS. It's using only four gigabyte of memory and up to 59% of the GPU and 169% of the CPU. I'm pretty early on in the game though, but the gameplay formula from what I've seen doesn't really change that much later on. We need to keep in mind that the game is running under Unity, 
which up until recently, devs have mostly ignored for high-end games. Plus, this one is in early access on the App Store too, so in my eyes, this is pretty, pretty good performance. Baldur's Gate 3 is the best modern RPG to play on Mac in 2023. The game runs natively in Apple Silicon, runs under Metal 2.1, supports HDR and AMD FSR 1.0. The Mac developer El Varels informed me that they aim to support Metal FX in the future, but can't guarantee it for the game's full release later this year. If you watched my M1 Mac gaming video in 2021, you may remember that it could run this game at 1440p ultra settings with about 80 to 120 FPS. This was during patch 5 of the game. This is no longer the case on either M1 Max or M2 Max. It now runs at about 60 FPS at 1440p high. Why is the performance worse? The reason is because back in patch 6, Larion Studios updated the Definity 4.0 engine dramatically with improved lighting and volumetric fog. This new tech is considerably more demanding and the algorithms are more complex. To compensate for this, Elvarel's added AMD FSR 1.0 support to the Mac port. So at the same settings, 1440p Ultra with AMD FSR put to balanced, we're seeing about 80 to 100 FPS. In this state, you'll be using 8.5 gigabytes of RAM at peak, 100% of the GPU and 504% of the CPU, 5 cores. Playing at 4K high is possible, but it's best to still have AMD FSR on balanced. Also, make sure VSync is on and a 60 FPS cap. In this state, you'll use 10 gigabyte of RAM, 90% of the GPU and 271% of the CPU. It saturates almost three cores. Metro Exodus was Apple's first crack at AAA gaming on Apple Silicon. Exodus runs under Molten VK on macOS. As most of us know, Molten VK translates the Vulkan renderer entirely into metal. The downside to supporting Molten VK meant that 4A games and Apple had to run the game through Rosetta 2. This isn't all bad, as Rosetta 2 is freaking powerful, as it will install an ARM emulated version of an X64 app. This is emulation at install time and not run time. At 1440p high, we're seeing anywhere from 60 to 120 FPS. At 1440p ultra, we're now seeing about 50 to 60 FPS. This is my preferred way to play the game, as it looks great and performs more consistently. Just make sure to enable VSync for the best experience. Lastly, at 4K high, it is hovering around 50 to 60 FPS. This port is missing the new, impressive Ray Tracing Edition from Windows PC and current gen consoles. So, if I was to choose between playing this game on Mac over a platform with Ray Tracing supported hardware, I'd always choose the latter. Turn-based strategy Warhammer 3 is definitely one of the most demanding AAA games for Apple Silicon. While it runs under Rosetta 2, Feral Interactive have optimized it for this translation layer and Metal 2.4. At 1080p high, it receives 68.8 FPS in battle and 61 FPS in campaign. Not amazing results, but it's acceptable performance. At 1440p high, it receives only 45.3 FPS in battle and 39 FPS in campaign. It's also using up to 10.2 GB of memory at peak and up to 99.8% of the GPU and 403% of the CPU, 4 cores. If you want a higher FPS at 1440p high, thankfully Feral Interactive have added AMD FSR support to the Mac version of this game. With AMD FSR enabled and resolution scaling set to 77%, the FPS jumps up to 63.8 FPS in battle and 55.3 FPS in campaign. Now we're using 
10.5 gigabyte of memory at peak and up to 99.8% of the GPU and 431% of the CPU. Four cores. 4K high probably isn't advised on this machine unless you don't mind AMD FSR enabled and a screen scaling of again 77%. This allows for 33.9 FPS in battle and 29.4 FPS in campaign. Overall, the Mac performance with this game isn't anything to write home about. The Mac port has its issues, but you can enjoy it if you happen to own it on one of these machines. Now it's time to look at action adventure Shadow of the Tomb Raider, still one of the best AAA games to try and Mac, made even better with HDR support. At 1080p highest settings, the game receives 107 FPS on average. If you want to get over 120 FPS at 1080p, you'll need to play at high settings, with motion blur off and pure hair on low. In this state, the machine uses up to 8GB of memory at peak and up to 98% of the GPU and 841% of the CPU, 8 cores are being used. 1440p at highest settings is enjoyable, averaging 75 FPS on average. The game visually looks great and the frame rate is stable. Playing at 4K in this game is where issues start to arise. If you play at 4K medium, you'll receive 43 FPS. In this state, the machine uses 12 gigabyte of memory at peak and up to 100% of the GPU and 332% of the CPU. Unlike X-Plane 11, X-Plane 12 is fully native on Apple Silicon and is very well optimized with Metal support and AMD FSR. I need to use Quartz Debug to show the FPS in this game as my FPS measurement tool could not get an accurate reading with this one. At 1440p high, it receives 60 to 80 FPS, which is pretty crazy as this game has to render so much in real time. If you want 60 FPS at 4K, you can put AMD FSR to balanced once again. The Mac version of X-Plane 12 obviously doesn't support VR, but I'm hoping with the rumors that Apple will soon dabble with VR, this could be added at a later date. Psychonauts 2 is an Unreal Engine 4 indie game, and while offering 3D stylized graphics, it's still a good showcase of the GPU power here. For example, I'm playing at 4K high with 50 to 60 FPS. It's using up to 4.6 gigabyte of memory and up to 87% of the GPU and 247% of the CPU. Two cores. I, I think that's actually pretty good results that we're seeing here, especially considering that this game was only optimized for Intel Max. Despite its age, Dying Light is one of my favorite AAA games on Mac. It's also still crazy popular in 2023, maybe even more than the second game, which isn't on Mac, sadly. Unfortunately, in mid-2022, Techland announced that this game will no longer be updated. Disappointing, as it's still an Intel app on Apple Silicon. Despite this, it runs very well, even when running under Metal 1, and considering it was only optimized for Intel-based Macs with AMD graphics cards. It's not officially supported here by any means. At 1440p high, it receives a locked 120 FPS. Very nice, especially wonderful if you're one of the crazy people who enjoy using guns in this zombie game. My WoW content on this channel is always horrendous. I'm sorry, I'm only level 13, and I have no intention of going higher than that anytime soon. I tried the game at 1440p max graphics with VSync off, and it received about 130 plus FPS. At 4K max graphics with VSync, it sees about 60 FPS. WoW was the first Mac game to support the Metal API and was the first game to support the ARM64 architecture on Apple Silicon. Kind of cool for such an old game. 
Here we have the survival horror game Alien Isolation. At 1080p high, it sees only around 50 to 60 FPS. Be sure to disable SSAO as it has massive performance issues on Apple Silicon based Macs. In this state, the game uses up to 3.5 GB of memory at peak and up to 91% of the GPU and 188% of the CPU. It saturates almost two cores. The funny thing to consider is that the iOS version has better performance than this. The iOS version runs under the ARM architecture, supports Metal 2, and contrast adaptive sharpening. The reason for the terrible Mac performance is simply because it runs on OpenGL 4.1 and OpenCL. This old API is deprecated and unfortunately means is that every Apple Silicon Mac from M1 to M2 sees pretty much the same performance. Feral told me they have no plans to update the Mac port, which is kind of sad. As most of you know by now, as of mid-2022, Minecraft is officially native on Apple Silicon. With popular mods installed through Fabric Loader, such as Sodium and Iris Shaders, you can play at 4K resolution fancy settings with over 200 FPS. Amazing! Several shaders work too. I'm using the most common one, otherwise known as Silda's Vibrant Shaders version 1.50 High. This completely revamps the lighting and adds advanced effects like volumetric lighting, bloom, ambient occlusion, and reflections. It's super, super special and looks nice. You can play it 4K fancy graphics with up to 60 FPS. Not bad, I think. Based on my testing at this state, I'm using up to only 3.1 gigabyte of memory at peak and up to 100% of the GPU and 337% of the CPU. I love mines, so I love Minecraft. Personally, every single one of my ancestors was a miner until they reached the age of 16 to 18, at which point many of them went on to become miners. Humankind is a more modern alternative to Civ 6 to try and Mac. Unlike Civ 6, Humankind is native on Apple Silicon. At 1080p Beautiful, it receives about 80 FPS. At 1440p Beautiful, it sees about 55 to 60 FPS. Lastly, at 4K Beautiful, it gets about 45 to 60 FPS. Keep in mind, I have absolutely no idea what the heck to do in this game, so my results may vary for you. Civ 6. Again, I have no idea what to do in this game and I simply don't care to learn. Anyway, at 1080p Ultra with VSync off, the average frame time is 16.701 milliseconds, around 60 FPS, and the average turn time is 9.68. At 1440p Ultra with VSync off, the average frame time is 17.415 milliseconds, and the average turn time is 9.76. In this state, you'll be using up to 6.3 gigabyte of memory at peak, and up to 100% of the GPU and 562% of the CPU. Lastly, at 4K Ultra with VSync off, the average frame time is 17.602 milliseconds and the average turn time is 9.78. In this state, you'll use up to 7.3 gigabyte of memory at peak and up to 100% of the GPU and 569% of the CPU. Black Ops 3 still remains the only COD game to try on Mac natively. It's made even worse that this is version 1.0 and cross-platform multiplayer is not supported. Anyway, the campaign is pretty fun, so let's look at that. At 1440p high, it receives 80 to 120 FPS. Not terrible performance, but I imagine if a spy optimized it, a locked 120 FPS might be possible. In this state, I'm using up to 10 gigabytes of memory, 100% of the GPU and 409% of the CPU. Four cores. 
If you choose to play at 4K, be sure to put everything on medium to receive 60 FPS. Playing at this state uses up to 10 gigabyte of memory at peak and up to 100% of the GPU and 362% of the CPU, almost four cores. Dirt 4 scales very well on Mac. It plays nicely on pure M2 and quite clearly plays like a dream on M2 Max. Not surprising though, as it's a 2017 game and not overly ambitious in the graphics department. At 1440p high, it sees a mostly locked 120 FPS. At 4K Ultra, it receives a mostly locked 60 FPS. Not bad. Borderlands 3 is one of the worst optimized AAA Mac ports of all time. I strongly believe it runs on Metal 1. Metal 1 is very outdated and has issues on Apple Silicon based Macs. For example, it only receives 60.14 FPS at 1080p high, which is not good. In this state, the game is using up to 8.5 gigabyte of memory and up to 99% of the GPU and 247% of the CPU, only two cores. It sees similar performance on pure M1. It's impressive performance there on a low end chip but extremely embarrassing performance here on M2 Max. At least the Mac port has cross-platform multiplayer. That's good. Everyone loves Deus Ex Mankind Divided in these videos. So here you go. At 1080p high, it sees 101.6 FPS. At 1440p high, it receives 78 0.5 FPS. Finally, at 4K high, we're seeing 36.5 FPS. In this state, it's using up to only 6.6 GB of RAM and up to 98% of the GPU and 254% of the CPU. Actually, quite impressive performance overall, especially considering the game is running on an old version of Metal and isn't optimized at all for Apple Silicon or Rosetta 2. I never look forward to showing this game as I'm absolutely awful, even against bots, like... Firstly, let's have a look at what I believe is the most common resolution for pro players. 960p at an aspect ratio of 4x3 and low settings. The average FPS is 253.54 FPS, an insanely high FPS to the average gamer. But I imagine some pro players will laugh at this. Don't forget the game is running under the OpenGL API folks, which isn't officially supported on macOS anymore, it's deprecated. At 1080p high, we're now seeing 201. 0.03 FPS on average. This is another common resolution for CSGO, so you can be happy knowing you can get by at this res. At 1440p high, it drops down to 179.17 FPS. Finally, at 4K, which is starting to be a common resolution with this game apparently, we're seeing 155.29 FPS. I can only begin to imagine how this game would perform if Valve updated it for Apple Silicon in any way. One can dream. One can dream. Okay, I'm I'm not the best person to show off Subnautica Below Zero. I have no idea how to play. I definitely built this base and didn't get it off the internet. The last time I looked at this game on M1 Max, I think it was running under OpenGL or the original version of Metal. Sometimes since then, Unknown Worlds have updated the macOS port. The performance here is freaking awesome, and another good showcase of the power of the Unity engine, which this game runs on. At 1440p high, we're seeing 80 to 120 FPS. In 2021, it only received 60 FPS 
at 1080p on M1 Max. So this is a monumental improvement. At 4K high, it drops down to 40 to 60 FPS. In this state, it's using up to 7 GB of memory and up to 100% of the GPU and 102% of the CPU, only one core. If 4K is a must for you, be sure to play at medium settings for a locked 60 FPS. Definitively Original Sin 2 still remains one of the top RPGs on Mac today. Let's see how it fares on M2 Max. At 1440p Ultra it receives 120 FPS. However, the FPS can drop a bit during challenging scenes, such as combat. At 4K Ultra, it's a mostly locked 60 FPS. This is my preferred way to play the game, as it looks simply gorgeous at this high resolution. Alvarez told me they don't really have a plan to update the Divinity Original Sin 2 port for the ARM64 architecture on Apple Silicon based Macs. Why? Well, because it already runs fine under Rosetta, so it would be a waste of their resources and time as Rosetta 2 isn't disappearing anytime soon. While I understand Farming Simulator 2022 might not be for everyone, it's a pretty demanding PC game with impressive realistic graphics. It's also native here, and Giant Software told me the game runs on Metal 2.0. At 1440p high, we're seeing anywhere from 80 to 120 FPS. At 4K high, it sees 60 FPS. In this state, it's using only 4 GB of memory at peak, and up to 100% of the GPU and 102% of the CPU, only one core. Make sure to enable VSync, which helps to remove the big FPS stutters with this one. Not many know, but LOL now supports the Metal API in beta form, instead of OpenGL. You have to go into the game's files and add it in via the config file. I've left a link in the description on how to do this. Anyway, at 1440p very high, we're seeing anywhere from 250 to 500 plus FPS, which I think is, I think is good. Or at 4K, it's about 290 plus FPS. And I think that's pretty decent too, right? Taste my blade. Dota 2 was the first Mac game to support Molten VK, I think. It massively helped with performance here too. At 1080p best looking, we're seeing 130 plus FPS. At 1440p best looking, it's now 130 plus FPS. Finally, at 4K best looking, it's dropped down to 90 plus FPS. I honestly don't really like MOBAs, so I'll leave it there. Our final game to look at is NBA 2K23 Arcade Edition. While this version of NBA isn't on the graphical level of the console or PC version, it's still quite a good looking title, especially if you consider it a mobile game. It's also running on a customized version of the Echo Motion Engine. Strangely, the Mac port only supports up to 1080p resolution, which is a very annoying, but you can easily play at ultra high with a locked 120 FPS. So that's good. I'm very, very bad at this game, but the gameplay formula really doesn't change. You're just throwing basketballs at a hoop. So I think my results are pretty accurate. What do you think of the gaming performance offered by the M2 Max chip? Are you impressed or disappointed? Overall, I think the performance is acceptable in terms of gaming on Mac. However, obviously it can't be compared to an equivalent spec gaming PC. I'd say the barriers for Mac gaming are much thinner these days, thanks to the power of the Metal framework, 
important gaming software being implemented into macOS, and the overall immense power of Apple Silicon hardware. But none of that really matters at the end of the day if there are hardly any new games to try on Mac, and not many people actually play games on Mac to begin with. I'm in a fortunate position where I get to speak to many gaming developers. The continuous response I receive about Mac ports is usually the following. The investment of a Mac port for our game at this point does not match the return on investment. Until then, we can't expect heaps of new games. Anyway, leave a like if you found this video helpful and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name's Stewie and thanks for watching.